This is a re-edit of a video that I published, oh, probably a year or more ago on a MXQ Android TV box. And because I mentioned a certain word that starts with K and ends with I, YouTube has deemed it uneligible to monetize. And I've disputed and disputed and disputed, and they still say, nope, so we're going to do it again and take out any reference right, guys, to that. Today in this video, I'm going to do an unboxing of this. Uh, it's a new 4K um, Android TV box that I received to evaluate. Anyway, let's open this thing up and uh, take a look at what's in the box. So I just received this. And I open it up. We have the destruction manual. We'll take a look at the manual here and we'll see that it is written. It's got English. It's written in English. Looks like it's got uh, French. And could be German, maybe? Don't know. It looks like it could be Spanish. Anyway, the manual's in a bunch of different languages. Set the manual over here. What we want to see is we want to take a look at this. It's an MXQ Pro. It's a 4K box, so we'll just unbox this unit and I'll unwrap it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hook it up to my TV and we're going to set this puppy up. So I'm going to shorten this down here. We're going to look at the build of this thing, of course, and I'll test it, but I'm not going to be able to show you loading any of the, the, the questionable files on here because apparently they fall outside of YouTube's guidelines for decency to show you how you can actually um, receive uh, programming off the internet. You'll have to research that part and do that part yourself. Uh, I had this video had like 400 and f almost 500,000 views and had been up for a while and they they demonetized it a while back. I, I appealed it. They said due to manual review, it wasn't it wasn't acceptable. And the second one where I showed a dual boot, uh, video on this they also demonetized that and have manually reviewed that and said it's not acceptable so those videos are coming down they'll be re-edited and i'm not going to make any reference to that four letter word that starts with k because that seems to be the problem so let's uh get on with this already already right out of the box i can tell that this was shipped with a european plug and they actually sent me, because I'm in North America, they actually sent me a North American adapter. It is a universal adapter. It operates on, on between 100 and 240 volts. AC, the output is 5 volts at 2 amps. That's just a standard barrel connector. So, I mean, any, any 5 volt 2 amp adapter will work. But I do have the adapter here so I can plug this thing in and just plug it into my regular standard North American outlet, which is going to be fine for the test. So I'm going to get this thing set up, I'm going to get it plugged into the TV, and uh, then we'll see what exactly this thing does. But before I do that, let's just take a look at uh, the unit itself. Maybe you guys want to see what the inside of this thing looks like. Let's take it apart, and uh, we'll just we'll examine this first, and then I'll hook it up. So this thing's going to come apart. I'm sure there's going to be screws on the bottom here that have to come out, and I probably have to pull, which I do. I have to take out the feet, and there's some small... Phillips screws. So we'll remove the four feet here. I'm just going to go grab a small screwdriver. We'll take this thing apart and just see what, what the chipset is in here and uh, take a look at it and then we'll fire it up and see how it works. Okay, so there's the unit itself. We've got an antenna here. This is for the. This will be for either for Bluetooth. I don't think it's got Bluetooth. It will just be the Wi-Fi antenna on it, because it does have Wi-Fi uh, built in. But looking at the the actual layout, we can't see what processor it's got because it's under a heat sink here, so we won't be able to see that. But we can certainly look at uh, some of the other uh, chips on here. See how they've laid this thing out. Hopefully the camera is in focus. 
can't tell because I'm just looking at like a small two inch screen so I'm hoping that it's in focus anyway that's the, the basic look of the unit it's got an SD card slot it's got four USB ports it's got an AV output and a SPDIF output HDMI it's got the LAN uh, Cat5 LAN connector and it's also got the onboard Wi-Fi not really much to see here so let's just put this thing back together and uh, we'll uh, get it powered up we'll set this unit up and uh, we'll see what we can get with this thing uh, right now it should not have anything installed on it what I'm going to do is I'm going to put Cody on here and then we'll uh, we'll load in a few repositories and see how well the unit works and we'll see if we can stream some 4K content from say YouTube or any other provider that uh, may have stuff in 4K it really amazes me how cheap these things have gotten too I remember when uh, when I first saw them hitting the market they were actually quite expensive and now these things are you know these things are a dime a dozen uh, these units now um, what I have typically used in the past to run Kodi or XBMC as I've used Raspberry Pis and maybe we'll do a video on a Raspberry Pi and how to set one of those up at a future time but today we're gonna set this one up okay I have the uh, unit is now connected to a mouse and to my HDMI and I'm just going to plug the power in and turn the unit on and we'll see what uh, comes up on the screen here as the system boots up well there we go the unit is now booted up and as you can see this unit actually has Kodi preloaded on it which is interesting so I've got the remote control here and I can uh, go through the different apps and settings and so forth I'm going to go into settings so I'll kill some of the lights in here as we don't need to have all the lights running and let's go and select network and it's going to show me all the Wi-Fi devices that uh, are available here I'm just going to find my Wi-Fi network and set it up and um, then we'll test it out. It looks like it only has the 2.4 band. It does not have a 5 gigahertz uh, radio in this thing. So let me connect it to my network here. Okay, so now I'm I'm uh, connected to my network. I'm just going to press the, the the return key here, and that should return me back to the the main menu. And let's just uh, check out what is already installed on this unit. And uh, it's going to prepare for first run. So um, so that's about all I'm going to show of this. I'm not going to show any installation of anything other than this, other than to say that this is a great media player. It'll play all your files off your SD card and off of your uh, uh, USB stick, as well as a hard drive, and it can also stream video online, and I'm going to leave it at that, because this one tends to be where the problem is when people show what this is capable of doing. So I'm not going to show you that. You guys can figure that one out for yourself. So I'll go over to System, and I can go down to System Info, and we can take a look, and we can see um, a lot of memory this thing's got in it. Right now, as you can see, my screen resolution is 3840 by 2160 at 60 hertz full screen. So it actually is um, outputting in 4K. So if there was a 4K content, we should be able to uh, see it in 4K. As you can see, we've got, we've got four CPUs and here's a quad core. So it's showing three cores here at the speed. Okay, we've got, uh, looks like our system is 4.5 gigs, 1 gig available. We're using 3.5 gigs of space, so there's 4 gigs of internal RAM, actually 4.5 gigs of internal RAM on this thing. We're using 3.5 gigs on here. 
And remember, this is this is Cody. This is just Cody. This is not the Android overhead. This is just Cody using this screen resolution. It's a ARM processor. Uh, GPU is a Mali 450. Right. Hardware. Here we go. So it's an Arch 64 processor. Hardware's AM Logic. And I'm just going to shut down Cody and we'll go back to. Uh, we'll go back to. Let me go to YouTube. So let me scroll down here to the little power button and I'll press OK. And this will kill Cody. And this should now return the unit back to Android. So now the unit is back to the Android operating system. We can scroll down here and take a look at some of the other um, icons that was got on here. I don't know what any of these ones are. What is this one? Is this YouTube? Well, it looks like that one might be uh, YouTube. It is. Cool. Let's uh, let's go find one of my uh, videos. I'll just search out my. Um, my own stuff here. I'll just click up here and type in 12 volt bits. And of course, I didn't type it right because that looks right. Okay. Okay, that looks like me. Let's uh, let's find something. So I'll hit enter. And that, that's interesting. The enter is putting up a Q. When I press the enter key on this thing, it's entering the letter Q on this keyboard. Weird. Okay. So if I click on my uh, mug, that should bring up my channel. And uh, let's uh, just go and find something that is in 4K. So if I use the remote control here, I should be able to click down and go through here and I'm going to find something that I've done in 4K. That's not my videos. Where's my videos? Mine are all here, looks like. So I'm just going to find something that I've done in 4K and say, take a look and see how the 4K playback is. So I just kind of have to search a bit here. Oh yes, this one here is 4K. Where are we here? Uh, I, guess, I guess it's this one that's going to play. So if I hit OK, this should play. Yep, yeah, this will play in 4K. Now I notice it's not filling the full screen. It's got the Android soft keys around the edge. I just wonder if I click on it, maybe it'll go to full screen. I'm at the Queensboro Community Center here for the Burnham Bay Amateur Radio Club flea market, and I'm hoping that I'm going to find myself a new scope. Let's go on in. I'm still trying to figure out what key to press to get this, to get this stuff off the bottom of the screen here. Oh, it's only letting me go to, it's only letting me go up to 1080. That's interesting. interesting because it, it's outputting 4k but I'm only able to stream up to 1080 now that might be because I'm connected by Wi-Fi and it's only on the 2.4 gigahertz band I should try connecting it by uh, Ethernet and see whether I'm going to get 4k because right now I'm only seeing it in 1080 and I still haven't been able to get rid of that annoying bar at the bottom of the screen but I'm sure there's a way to do that I just haven't figured it out yet. First all I had to do was go down with the mouse and click at the bottom corner here and I got rid of it. I still at the top of the screen they'll have this at the top of the screen. It's got the time and it's got the uh, the Wi-Fi indicator which is also unacceptable that it's keeping that on the screen all the time. I gotta figure out a way to get rid of that now. And you look at other things in here like the display settings which we know here we can adjust our screen resolution for example. Oh, Daydream. I wonder what that does. It's, it looks like it's got HDR too. Daydream clock. 
let's just see what it does, what it says on here. There you go. Have a nice digital clock. Leave that on your TV. Oh, cool. So we can have different things. We can have colors. And if I want to take a look at this, what is this going to do for me? If I click on Start Now, what is this going to show me? Oh, it's going to just show me some funky colors which don't seem to do anything. Are they going to change or are they just going to sit there? Looks like they're going to change. Oh, far out, man. Psychedelic. So this is what it'll do if it uh, sits for, you know, you can set it for an hour, for example, or set the time. It's just going to go into a, a screensaver display that uh, just give you whatever you put up there. Or we can uh, see you can when to daydream after an hour, 30 minutes, 5 minutes, whatever you can set it to, right? Uh, when to sleep. And uh, there's some of the other features. It's got photo frame. So if you have a bunch of photos on there or a photo table, if you've got photos loaded on a USB stick or on a SD card, it's going to, uh, it's going to go to those. Screen resolution. I'm using the mouse to control this. But here's where you can set your different settings. So you can take it to 720p 50 hertz, 4K 24 hertz, 4K or 2K 24 hertz, maybe both. 4K or 2K 25, 4K or 2K 30 hertz, 4K or 2K 50, 4K or 2K 60 hertz, that's where I'm set right now. And then you've also got uh, uh, SMPT settings. And 1080p 24, 576, 50 hertz, 480p uh, 60 hertz. So it's got different settings. Obviously, on a 4K TV, you're going to want it on that setting there. If you're plugging it into just a straight, uh, well, this one here actually it'll be 4K or 2K automatically. So if you leave it in that setting, it'll work on anything. Let's try the Film On uh, app down here. Click on this one here. This is uh, Film On, which should be. TV anywhere. This would be, uh, I believe, this is all advertiser supported on here. Yes, it is. So if I go to live TV. And of course, I get spammed with advertising. Okay. Here we go. Touch to connect and play videos. So here we've got all these TV channels now. BBC News. The friendships that we had. BBC One. Let's click on here and see whether it comes in. And I keep getting these ads that have to close down. So this one now starts on uh, HD, and now I'm watching BBC One Wales in HD here. I'll just go and I'm going to kill the sound first of all. Let's go to uh, Canadian TV here and click on Canadian TV and see what we get. Looks like we've got the CTV network out of Edmonton, Regina, Lethbridge, and Yorkton. Let's go to CTV uh, CFRN. CTV out of Edmonton, and there we go. Uh, it's an ad for Kijiji that's going to run right now, and it's going to go for another eight seconds. So, there we go, and that's HD. And there we go, it is now uh, kicked into uh, live TV on CTV. This is what's on right now, it says right here CTV network. So, that's working. So, we have live TV on film on. Just gonna click the mouse here and get back out of here and go back to the uh, get back over to uh, see what other oh True TV let's see if we can get let's see let's 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 watch True TV so I go to True TV and I get another ad ah
book and over and then it just still is quiet. Double click on here and it should bring it up full screen. There we go. Now this channel is not broadcasting in HD, but uh, there's there's True TV off of uh, Film On, as you can see, it's got their logo on there. So this is all advertiser-supported TV. This is. I'll put my portable hard drive on my removable hard drive. I'm going to fire up the hard drive, and here's my here's some of my content here. And these these 4K file these are 4K files here. Let's see. So let's just see how it uh, will play the 4K files off of the hard drive directly. Oh, uh, that, oh there, well, it seems to be having a bit of a problem, doesn't it? So we're starting our... So it doesn't appear to be... Uh, road trip we're <laughs> that's not working out too well, is it? It's uh, certainly not, uh, Cody is certainly not playing this. Let me just bail out of this thing if I can. Uh, we'll try this with the, uh, the built-in media player. Stop it. That didn't work. I'm just going to get out of, uh, go down here to shut it off. I'm going to get out of Cody and I'm going to try playing the mp4 files with the built-in uh, media player which is not part of Kodi. Obviously Kodi as we can see is, is not is not happy playing uh, a, uh, a 4k file. Okay drive number 16 yep that's the name of the drive. Okay now this is the movie player that's built in. I allow it allow movie player to access photos and videos. So now this will, this is playing it directly through Android and not going to play it through Kodi. And I have to say that it's having trouble playing this as well. So we're starting our 2015 road trip. We're just uh, leaving Ladner. We're going so to uh, I'm going to say that... Uh, this is a fail. Um, definitely a, uh, a fail. Now that may be that my data rate is quite high. I know it is quite high on uh, on there. Let's just try. Some other 4K content. Nope, it's still, it's still not playing it. So um, 4K is, uh, you know, it's outputting in 4K, but it's certainly not. Uh, it's not handling it. That's for sure. We'll try some HD content instead and see whether, whether HD content. Uh, Now this is HD, this one, so let's see how HD content works. HD content seems to be working fine. But uh, 4K content, um, no, um, leaves a little to be desired. So even though the box says it's 4K, it's, um, well, you saw it. It's not playing, it's not playing MP4 files in 4K. It wasn't streaming anything off of YouTube in 4K. It wasn't going beyond... Uh, wasn't going anything beyond 1080p. Now by comparison I'll plug my hard drive right into my smart TV and we'll see that 4K actually will play on that. So I'm just going to stop this and unmount my hard drive. So here we go we've got the uh, smart TV plugged in or the hard drive plugged into the smart TV so I can uh, look at the same the same programming so this is the 4K content, and as you can see, um, it's going to play fine on the TV. No stuttering, no freezing, no breaking up, no glitching. So, we're so this is uh, this is how it should play, but um, unfortunately, through the uh, 
Cody box and even when I tried watching it through the Android box. I won't call it a Cody box because it's an Android box that we have Cody installed on. Um, it's not doing 4K. Um, I couldn't play the same file even with the movie player that was built in. I couldn't play the same file so um, I'm going to say that even though it technically should be able to do it and it's outputting 3840 by 2160 60p uh, signal to the TV. The TV sees it as a uh, as a 60p signal uh, at at 4K. It's not it's not able to play it. It's not able to play the MP4 files from my hard drive. Um, therefore, it just doesn't seem to have quite enough steam. But you know what? Somebody who's buying one of these boxes is not buying this to watch 4K content. You're buying a box like this to watch streaming TV and you're not going to be getting anything streaming in 4k it just it just there isn't any or there's not enough content in 4k right this is my time lapse from a series of still photos uh, there's just not enough content in a, it's available to stream in 4k right now uh, that might change but today there's not a lot out there and uh, most people don't have the bandwidth to do it anyway. You need a good uh, 20, meg 20 to 25 megabits sustained download to get 4K content. Uh, I have 4K content. I have a 4K box for my TV. And it, it looks fantastic, right? It looks fantastic. It looks just like what we're seeing right here. Uh, this Android box didn't quite cut it. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that video. I uh, hope you enjoyed the look at this MX say. MXQ Pro 4K Android box. You know, it's uh, for what it costs. I think yeah, most people are going to be pretty happy with it, but uh, I wouldn't expect that you're going to get real good 4K um, playback on it. It just it's got lots of RAM. The processor should do it. It's a quad core. It should do it. But as you saw when we tried to uh, play 4K content. Um, even playing it locally it didn't uh, perform properly it was the picture was freezing and breaking up now uh, I'm going to load Cody 17.1 onto this box that's one of the reasons I went and got the uh, the Google Play uh, store on there so I could get the new version of Cody I am going to load the new version of Cody on there and we'll try that out and see if, if it uh, makes a difference but there you go hope you enjoyed this video thanks for watching I know it's been a little bit long and believe me there's a lot more that I shot on this that I'm showing you because I did do a lot of I did do a lot of testing on this and tried different things with it uh, but I'm not going to be including them in the video because they're irrelevant I'm just showing you the, the media player portions of this so there you go hope you enjoyed it catch you later bye